You go first, first game? Okay. Okay, so one, two, or three. And you're going to start with three. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to take two. You'll move. Okay, I shall also take two. Interesting. Ooh, buried up this time. first move. Okay. okay. I win. Okay, so what went on there? Well, because of the rules of the game, there are actually only three possible final moves. Because if I'm left with three, then I'll take all three to win the game. If I'm left with two, I'll take both of them to win the game. And if I'm left with one, I'll take it to win the game. And indeed, we had two of those options in the two games we played. So, if I can guarantee that my opponent will leave me either one, two, or three, then I'm guaranteed to win. And one such way of doing that is to make sure that I leave him or her four, because if they take one piece, then I'm left with three, which I can win with. If they take two pieces, I'm left with two, I can win with. And if they take three, and they can't take more than three, then I'm left with the final piece and I win. So we've now reduced the game from rather than having to determine who takes the last piece, is actually can I leave my opponent with four pieces? Well, of course, I can do that. If that's a winning position, then so is this, because within that previous set of four, any move that my opponent makes I can match to take the remaining ones from that row and leave four. So not only is four a winning position for me to leave, so is eight. And by the same, same token, so is 12, so is 16, and so is 20. And so when we started the game, we actually had 25 pieces laid out in a grid like that. So in fact, by going first, I had an advantage. So for the second game, you may have noticed that my first move was to take one piece. And that left 24 pieces, and so Mike didn't stand a chance as soon as I'd taken my first go. Now, of course, I also won when Mike started, but that was because I was mean and didn't tell Mike how to play the game properly until this moment. And so when he took his first move, Unless he took one as his first move, then I could swoop. And so after the first move in the second, in the first game, sorry, I actually left not 24, but 20 pieces. Because Mike took two, I took three, and we were left with 20. And I would now have the advantage, and there was no way back for Mike. That's how we win the game. And what we want to do is to write a, a computer program so he can make those decisions and beat it, provided we don't either we give it an advantage at the start of the game or we make a single error. There's a way of not playing games with strange people in streets <laughs> is this game where instead of being able to take one, two or three in a go, 
actually they are arranged, the pieces are arranged in rows, and you can take as many as you like from a single row, but no more than one row. So they're normally arranged like this, so one, three, five, and seven, which is like that. And so these are the rows, so there's seven in that row, five in that row, three in that row, one in that row. And on either my or indeed Mike's go, we can take as many, including the whole row if we wish to, but only let's take from a single row. And the winner is the person who, who forces their opponent to take the final piece. Rather like the other game, there is an advantage depending on whether you go first or second. When set up like this, the advantage actually goes for the player who goes second. And that's an important thing to realise. In the same way, if we had 24 to start with, as soon as you go second, you have the advantage. Because most people think it's an advantage to go first. So we could play this game. The algorithm is a bit more complicated here. It's not about fours. It's actually have to think about all the rows. And actually, it's based on binary. But perhaps we can play the game. So do you want to have a, a go, Mike? Yeah. Um, so I can take as many as I like from a row. Yes, into the whole row, if you like. Right. Or I can just take one, two, or three. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, oh. A maximum of seven, because there's seven in a row. But any from any row, any row you like. OK, so that's interesting. So in that case, I'm going to take that lot. Interesting. <laughs> I win. <laughs> but I have to say, the point at which I won that game was before we'd even started. Because yeah. by making you go first, yeah. there was nothing you could do to beat me. Um, no. Because it's a bit more complicated, actually you had a fighting chance of um, of winning if you go second. But even then, yep. most players, you'd be pretty confident of beating. OK, so it was a slightly unfair game. Um, a, because I played it before and I therefore had a better strategy than Mike. And B, actually, I, I didn't really give him any chance at all. And I can show you the part of the game where I knew that Mike had lost because there was nothing he could do to beat me. And actually, the position of the game at that point was like this. When we had, in fact, one in the first row, three in the second, five in the third, and seven in the fourth. In, I.e., at the very start of the game, Mike had already lost the game by virtue of the fact that I offered to let Mike go first, which sounds like an advantage. In fact, it isn't an advantage, it's a disadvantage. It's a bit more complicated here, actually, based on the binary numbers. We've got 1 here in binary, this is 1, 1 in binary, this is 1, 0, 1, and this is 1, 1, 1. And if you notice that, if you look at the units, there is the four, all four rows have one in the unit column, Two of them have it in the, the twos column, and two of them have it in the, the, um, the fourth column. What that means is it's actually balanced. And whenever you've got a balanced game where you've got it's even this, an even number in each of those three columns, then I have control of the game, because any move that Mike makes will unbalance it, leaving me the possibility of balancing it again. But it is a bit more complicated because at the end of the game I have to unbalance it because it's actually an unbalanced position that I need to leave Mike to ensure that he, that he um, loses. In fact, the obvious part is when I leave him with one piece and that's an unbalanced position. So it's a bit more complicated, but the reason you want the balance is because it gives me control. What There's nothing that Mike can do until the end 
that won't unbalance the game. And so the moral is, if somebody offers to play this game with you in the street, particularly if money's involved, run away. <laughs>